Coming up today in episode 220 of Husevik Heroes, we take on yet again Manchester United, this time in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Can we get past them and make our way into the final four yet again? Find out off the back of the intro. Two Who's of the Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and if you're looking forward to today's episode, which might possibly be the last one, of course, of the series. As soon as we lose, this one is over. But do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. But first things first today for the last time in this save, in 2040, we do have the next gen list, and as you can see up the top there, quite a few Volsinger players are on this list. There are six of them. We start off with the player we did sign not that long ago, who has gone back out on loan to Rosenborg, and that player is Ari Onswam. We signed him for just over three million pounds overall. He is ranked 15th on the next gen list. Looks like a really promising left winger when we do sim forward. In the save come next week. Also on the list is a young Portuguese midfielder in Felipe Pedroza. He was ranked 18th and 39th. It's probably our third choice striker at the club these days. He's been on the next gen list now a few times in Kevin Vuters. And then we make our way into the final 10. Volta is ranked at 40, the Brazilian right winger who has gone back to Brazil on loan with Bahia. And in 42nd, we have Ricalo, who's currently sitting in our under-19s, is the Bosnian right midfielder. And to round things off in 47th spot, a centre-back out of Brazil in Rodolfo Raidel. So quite a few young players from our club here are on this list this season. Hopefully, that does mean that we will continue to have success when we do sim forward in that video coming up on the channel at some stage next week. And we did also sign one player off of this list. I couldn't help myself. It's a disease. I've got an addiction, I need to stop. And that player was a centre-back out of Portugal in Helder Malau. He is 17 years old, one and a half star current ability, four star white potential, but three stars goal. We picked him up for £850,000 in compensation. And as you can see, that value has already shot up more positives than negatives in terms of our coaching staff. So hopefully he is yet another player who can help us have a bit of success when we do sim forward come next week. But we are about to take on Manchester United in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. If you missed out on how we got here over the last few episodes, I'll leave a link to yesterday's one, the second leg of that first knockout round tie against Police Saint-Germain in the top right corner. We do need to recap a little bit of stuff first things first domestically, and we have picked up the final time in the save, and then we got for our group very comfortably off the back of that win in that second leg of the first knockout round. We picked up very, very comfortable wins over both Kordlinger and Grotta, and then quite a tough road in the finals, taking on Filke in the semi. We bet them 5-1. That was a good result. And then also HK in the final by a scoreline of five goals to nil. So that does mean that we pick up the League Cup yet again. And that means that for this save, we have a record of winning that. In 18 of the 19 times that we did take part in it, just one year back in 2028, where we did get upset there in the semi-finals from memory, by Brader Blick, but we picked that one up yet again and off the back of this Champions League quarterfinal. The last domestic trophy that we can pick up is the Super Cup, and that will be against Nuts KR, of course, off the back of them finishing second in the league last season. But it is time for us to take part in the Champions League quarterfinals. We take on Manchester United, of course, very, very familiar with these guys, been played them a lot in the save so far, and also in the group stages. Only last week we picked up a 3-0 win at home and then two all the way at Old Trafford. A little bit of a frustrating result that throwing away a 2-0 lead that we did have in that game before halftime. But not much has changed in terms of both teams going into the knockouts. Man United look very, very similar in terms of their personnel and still find themselves in second on the Premier League. Still a long way behind Chelsea, who it does look like are going to take out that title. But they should be finishing in second spot there and England this season. It's quite interesting that Premier League table because one of our potential opponents in the semi-finals 
is of course Chelsea. We take on the winner of that tie between them and AC Milan. Both of those games take place on the same match day, so we can just ignore that top half of the draw. For now, the one thing that we do need to consider though going into this game is the fact that Adam Saki has just recovered from that injury he did suffer in that second leg against PSG in yesterday's episode, but is only recommended for 60 minutes of football and doesn't quite have a full green heart. So because of that reason, Ori Poor House on the young Icelandic striker is going to start up front for us. But apart from that, a first choice 11 and Adam Saki is on the bench still. So it's a pretty strong team, even with that little injury Adam Saki hasn't fully recovered from. We can still use them if we need to, and we'll come back shortly with the action from the first leg at my arena as we take on Manchester United yet again. And here are the team sheets for this first leg. Here we are, as I ran through before, Paul Helsen up front and Adam Saki on the bench. That's our only switch from that second leg against Pili St. Germain, Manchester United going with a 4 4 2, looking very, very similar to what we did see in the group stages last week, and hopefully we can pick up a similar result here in the home league. And our first proper highlight comes nine minutes into this game. We had an early one where Paul Halson had a great chance, but unfortunately was offside. And even then, the Man United goalkeeper did make a good save, but Paul Halson now finds himself inside the box. Does loop its out position there, though, to book collect, albeit does do a good press there. Does Paul Halson win his position back? Nice ball into the mixer, and jean Abies Lapisse gets his head on the end of that. And after 10 minutes, we take a 1-0 lead, and that is a great start there for the one change from that previous game against Police St. Germain. It is injury-enforced, but it's really good fight there from Paul Helsen. After losing out on position, he gets it straight back, and then Lapisse open here at the far post, and he puts us 1-0 up. And only a few minutes off the back of their opening goal, another highlight here. It's a free kick just inside our own half, but hopefully we can get back on the attack here shortly and get off to a really good start. In this one, some good short passing now right on the edge of the box. Lapisse plays that one back to Burger, Puts a ball in there for Aga Tigre looking dangerous so far in the air. But that header goes just over the bar and it remains 1-0. And at the 25-minute mark, our next highlight does start looking to stay on the front foot. And now Santa Maria brings down Aga Tigre already on a yellow card. The referee is reaching for a second yellow card. That is a big moment. We are now 1-0 up and still with about an hour left in this game. Manchester United are down to 10 men. Can Lapisse make the most of it? He can't. That free kick comes off the crossbar, but we still hold a 1-0 lead and now are playing against 10 men for the rest of this first leg. And shortly off the back of adjusting some instructions for the opposition at the half hour mark, yet again, we look to get an attack on the go here, but that ball just a little bit too much on it. And Manchester United really, for the first time in this game, Get a decent spell here off position. Blowman will try and chip Carl Vollen. That comes off the crossbar. So that is a bit fortunate there for us against the 10 men of Manchester United. And we keep it somehow at 1-0 Volsinger. And that is half time in the first leg of this Champions League quarterfinal. Happy with how things are going, albeit would have liked the second goal there after Manchester United did go down to 10 men. But we still have 45 minutes to try and grab a cushion goal going into that second leg. At Old Trapper, but pretty happy with how things are going, especially with that red card as well. No changes needed as we get the second half back underway with that 1-0 lead. And with 54 minutes gone, we have our first highlight here of the second half. It is a free kick here to Manchester United, so they're starting to find a little bit of heart here. Down to 10 men, free kick there from Bloman, looking for that top right corner, thankfully. Goes just over the bar, and still 1-0 in our favour. And just past the hour mark now, we are going to make our first substitution of this game. Lasana Dumbia playing okay and is down to a red heart. Bruno Costa, the Ballon d'Or winner, can come on for him. And also while we're at it, playing against 10 men here, I think we'll put the foot down a little bit and put our wing backs on attack as we look for a second goal. And shortly off the back of that prior substitution, time for our next one. Agatigare now down to a red heart. Menga will come on for him. And again, going forward, only a few minutes off the back of that previous substitution, it is time for us now to make our last one. Benvenu Bea only going okay and is down to a red heart. Marcelo Jr. will come on for him with our last substitution. We'll also get Bruno Costa onto a centre mid on attack and see if that can help us here. Try and get that 2-0 lead. And we finally have another highlight here in the second half. It is a thrown inside the final third. Poor Halson yet again tries to square that for Lapisse, but this time... That header does go straight into the arms 
of Ismail Adina. We are still yet to score against Manchester United. While they have been down to 10 men, hopefully that changes because 1-0 would not be the greatest result here when you do consider how things have been going. Thankfully, down that left-hand side, Man United do run out of room and we might get a chance here to add another goal onto the score sheet. Lapisse inside the box from a tight angle there gets a shot off, but pretty well saved there from a Dean. And it's still going to remain 1-0 here as we do start to enter the last few minutes of this game, albeit not too long off the back of that previous highlight. There is another one. Can we grab that second goal that we are looking for? Burger finds Lapisse. He might be offside, albeit. Does beat a Dean there from a very tight angle. We are going to wait here for a VAR check. I do think he might have been offside. Hopefully I am wrong. And I am wrong. It's a goal to Lapisse. He will pick up a double. And there is that second goal that we were looking for with only six minutes left in this one. It's a bit of a soft effort there from the Man United goalkeeper, albeit a powerful strike from Lapisse. We will just see here how close this was to offside. Thankfully, their left back at the top of the screen is actually playing Lapisse onside. And we grab that second goal and make it 2-0 here with only a few minutes left. And hopefully, that will be how this one finishes at the very least. If we can grab one more goal, that might almost potentially put this tie to bed, but it does look like this is how things are going to finish. Thankfully, Lapisse scores a goal in either half. We potentially could have put the foot down there a little bit more while they were down to 10 men, but in the end, a 2-0 win against Man United, not quite as well as we did in the group stages in this game. We did win it 3-0, but still, that is a good advantage to take to Old Trafford for the second leg, and hopefully we can see this lead out and make our way through to the semi-finals Yet again, we'll just go forward and see what the result from the other quarterfinal, which we do need to keep an eye out on between AC Milan and Chelsea was. And things are all locked up going into the second leg of that one at Stamford Bridge. One all there after the first leg. And we are playing on the next match day of the Champions League as well. We have the short turnaround for the second leg. So unless anything else comes up between now and then, we'll come back shortly and get straight back into the action with a 2-0 lead from Old Trafford. And unfortunately, we are back before the second leg, and that means that something has gone down. And indeed, two things have gone down since we did play that first leg against Manchester United. We are missing two of our better players for the second leg. Unfortunately, both of them just picked up niggly injuries in training off the back of that first leg win and haven't quite recovered in time enough to feature in the second leg. And those two players are Filippo Dinelli. He will be coming back tomorrow, but isn't quite right to feature in this game with a 2 0 lead, I think we can afford to leave him out of our squad. And the same applies for Lasana Dumbia. He's coming back in two days. So that does mean for the second leg, we have changed up our staying 11 and our bench. As you can see up above, Kapan and Lemiedo make their way onto the bench. And in terms of our starting lineup, Costa and Erdan Shaihi make their way into the staying 11. Not too bad bringing those two players with a pretty similar star rating into the team. And also Bruno Costa, of course is the Ballon d'Or holder, so that's not too bad of a luxury to have. But while we are here, we will go down and check in on how Phil Kier are getting on in their quarterfinal in the Conference League. And great news is Phil Kier have picked up a result there away from home against the Russian outfit in Kulia Sovetov. They pick up a 2-0 win thanks to two second-half goals there to Borg Person. So hopefully that means that they are in a strong position to be making their way through to the semi-finals as they look to keep hold of their Conference League crown, which they did win last season. But we ran through our changes before, and we'll come back shortly from Old Trafford with that slightly changed team, and hopefully see out that 2-0 lead in the second leg of this Champions League quarterfinal. And here are the team sheets for the second leg. Manchester United obviously picked up a red card in that first league, so would have been forced into a few changes because of that. Interesting to see also Joe Corcoran is in goal, but they are staying in the same formation. And then we are as we ran through before those changes at the back with Shitey and in the midfield with Bruno Costa. But we do take a 2-0 lead going into this one. Hopefully we make our way through to the semi-finals yet again. And we have an early corner in this one. Bruno Costa is going to put this into the mixer. But Siki gets his head on the end of that. It does come off the post and just goes wide. So a good early chance for us there to make it 3-0. And that might have almost put this tie to bed. But we do get another chance here potentially at the 8-minute mark as we do have a free kick and a nice ball played over the top there for Ori Paul Halson. We'll try and take that one to Warren Corcoran, 
but he makes a decent save there and just keeps that out of the back of the net. So a few good early chances for us here at Old Trafford, but still nil all on the day, 2-0 on aggregate here, 10 minutes into the second leg. And again, we have another highlight here looking to put the pressure on Manchester United nice and early, albeit Rodinko Crollo has picked up an early yellow card. That's something we might need to keep an eye out on, but at the moment, we continue to get right on top of United here. So it's been a good start to the second leg. Some good short passing. Nice chance here for Ben Benu Bayer, but Corcoran, our former goalkeeper, of course, makes a really good save there from the shot from Ben Benu Bayer and somehow keeps it nil all here early despite all this pressure. And that is how things will stay 12 minutes into the second leg. And that is half time in the second leg of this Champions League quarterfinal. Nothing happening at all off the back of that early flurry of highlights in our favour where we probably should have made it 1-0 on the day, but still in quite a strong position, 2-0 up on aggregate with 45 minutes left and everyone at the moment playing fairly well. So for now, we'll make no changes at half time and kick off the second half still with that 2-0 advantage and only 45 minutes left before we make our way into another Champions League semi-final. And only a few minutes into the second half, it's a throw in here for Manchester United as they look to find a way back into this game. They put that ball into the mix, so that's a great chance there for Vincent, but he just misses the target, and we still hold our 2-0 lead. And we've gone forward to the hour mark, and I think it is time for us to make a few substitutions. Ben Benu Beha is out there on a six-point free, hasn't really improved since halftime, where I think he was on a 6.4, so we will definitely take him off for Marcelo Jr. and try and improve in that Mazzala role. And also, while we are here, Redenko Crollo is, of course, on a yellow card, so I think we'll also bring on Christopher Allegard for him. That two of our sub used, but still 2-0 up with a half hour left. And not too long off the back of those first few substitutions, it is a corner here for Manchester United. There's a good chance there for one of their players on a yellow card, but just heads that over the bar. So we are still nil all on the day, but 2-0 up after the first leg, albeit Man United getting a good little spell here in the second half. And there was a good chance there for Blowman to put one in the back of the net, but Carl Volen comes up big for us there. So at the moment, this game is a bit all about the goalkeepers. I think it's fair to say some good chances for both teams, but the goalkeepers have made a few good saves. And thankfully, it looks like we have dealt with the subsequent corner. And right off the back of that previous highlight, we're going to make our last substitution. Lapise only on a 6.4. Adam Saki a bit fitter for the second leg. He can come on and pour house on. Can switch out to left wing for these last 20 minutes. Still with that 2-0 lead. And we have just entered the last 10 minutes of the second leg. Still with that 2-0 lead. So I think it is time for us to start being a little bit more disciplined. And start to time waste just a little bit. As we look to make our way into those semi-finals. And we've only got a few minutes left in the second leg. It's a corner there to Man United, but Castro also on a yellow card just puts that over the bar. So they have certainly had their chances to try and get back into this one. But thankfully, neither team has been that good in front of goal in the second leg. That and also a combination of the goalkeepers being quite good at both ends. We might get a chance here, though, ourselves here, potentially on the counter-attack to really put this tie to bed, albeit with only three minutes of added time. We should be safe now to try and make our way through to the semi-finals, albeit Marcelo Jr. does give that ball back to United, albeit then Bruno Costa with the interception. Sucky nice ball there for poor house on, but just misses the target. And it does look like this one might finish locked up at nil all as we make our way into the last minute. There's a free kick here to Man United, and that's a great save there from Carl Vollen. And Man United can't do anything off of the subsequent chances. So again, the goalkeeper's really coming to the fore here in this second leg at Old Trafford. We'll see if anything else does happen in this closing highlight, but I suspect that might be it for this one in terms of useful action. Not the most entertaining second leg. As I said, both teams really could have scored some goals here in this one, but both goalkeepers have performed quite well in Carl Vollen for us, and especially in those opening 12 minutes or so, Joe Corcoran. For Manchester United, but it does look like we are going to knock Manchester United out of the Champions League in the quarterfinals off the back of picking up a win and a draw against them in the group stage as we are still on the attack here. That's an interesting slide tackle to finish off the game on Bruno Costa, but nonetheless, we get the job done. Only a nil all draw away from home, but still that 2-0 win from the first league does mean we live on in the save in this final European season and have made our way through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. We'll come back shortly and see who we are playing in the semi-finals tomorrow.
And we've gone for a few days off the back of that nil all draw at Old Trafford, which does mean we are through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. We'll reveal our opponent shortly, but first things first, Phil Kia romping into the semi-finals of the Conference League. They win the second leg 9-1 against their Russian opponent. That means they go through 11-1 on aggregate to certainly in great form heading into the final four of the Conference League. And if we go over to the stages page, you can see things might be a little bit tougher for them than they were last season. They take on the absolutely loaded money-wise Newcastle United to fill here. If they can win that semi-final and with a grand chance of picking up the Conference League, get again to fill here alongside us, are also going to be in the semi-finals of Europe in tomorrow's episode, but going up to the Champions League. And the results from those quarterfinals from the top half of the draw, Juventus picked up a 3-2 win there in the second leg, so they go through over Barcelona. They will take on RB Leipzig in the other semi-final as they picked up a 3-1 win on aggregate over Manchester City, so that is a little bit of a surprise, at least in the second one of those quarterfinals. But in terms of us, we are taking on the Premier League leaders and probably winners in Chelsea as they go through on penalties at Stamford Bridge over AC Milan after a two-all draw made up of one-all draws in both leagues. The Champions League semi-finals for this season it is Chelsea versus Volsunger. It does mean the deciding league is going to be played at my arena, so hopefully that could prove useful if we do struggle a little bit at Stamford Bridge, albeit so far in the save. Our record against Pep Guardiola is very, very good. And in the other semi-final, RB Leipzig take on Juventus. If we can get past Chelsea, I think we are in with a real chance of picking up the Champions League for a third straight season and a fifth time overall. A quick look at Chelsea before tomorrow's episode. As I said, Pep Guardiola, we have a great record against, albeit these days, it's a very, very strong looking Chelsea squad with the likes of Axel Greenwell. We matched up with him a few seasons ago while he was at Lille, obviously these days at a much better club. Also the likes of Guvan Kivink. They've still got a good goalkeeper in Carlos Ortega. It's a pretty strong Chelsea team. It will be a good matchup coming up in tomorrow's episode. As we saw earlier, they are absolutely bossing the Premier League and in fact have already won it. 20 points clear of Manchester United and they still have five games left in the season. That does mean they can rest some of their better players going into those Champions League semi-finals. So that could be a bit tougher than the semi-finals usually are against English teams taking on a team who have already wrapped up the Premier League title. But that will do it for today's episode. We get past Manchester United in the quarterfinals. Finally, we have dealt with them for this save. And that does mean that we take on Pep Guardiola yet again tomorrow as we take on Chelsea in the semi-finals. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on this channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. And until tomorrow for the Champions League semi-finals, as I've said the last few days, it could potentially be the last episode of this save. But until then, thank you for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.